how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm getting to the end of my weekend and I'm sure you are. <laughs> yes, I'm very tired. It's been how, a long How busy few days. has it been for you guys? Um, it's been quieter today. Okay. Uh, Sundays have been a little bit more, well, I say it's quieter, it's still been pretty busy. Uh, yesterday was, was heaving, yesterday seemed to be the day uh, for people to come down. Uh, we didn't stop for about three or four hours wow. from, from the opening of the doors. So at the end of this weekend, you're going to be so happy that it's ended. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're, <laughs> we were really happy last time. We've been at all the shows now. Yeah, um, that's true. We, we were at the first practical shooting show, of course, and then turned to the target shooting show. Um, and we, we really enjoyed it at the last one. Unfortunately, it's been 18 months because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, but it's great. This is the first, first show uh, for 18 months. Uh, so it's just great to see people again, like yourself. Well, to be honest, it's awesome to see your stall. It looks really good. Thank you very much. We, we really wanted to step it up this year. Uh, so we've got a few uh, additional touches, of course, a lot more product. Yep. So we've been busy over lockdown. Um, new product uh, colors, new colors, new ranges. It is super colorful, I'm um, not gonna lie. We've also got um, a few more things uh, in the pipeline. I'll give you a few teasers uh, do. on that. Um, but yeah, we, we really like getting hands-on um, face-to-face with the customers. A lot of people, they know that they want one of our loaders, which is which is nice. Yeah. But they want to get their hands on it. They want to talk to us about what size is, what configurations are going to suit them, um, and and feel the difference. Now that we've got the Element loader and the Pro loader as well. Yeah. Getting their hands onto it and then making the decision of, of where to go. So it's good to get that that face. So, so what do you have specifically for this show that's quite new that you like to share with us? So specifically for this show, uh, Connors has been very very busy with the PPQ. So people will know if they if they know me through English shooting, they know how much of a fan I am um, of the PPQ. Um, in fact, so much that you someone, have the English someone shooting put my logo, my logo on it. Yeah. On it. Um, it's a great competition gun, I think, for the price. Yeah. Um, you can pick them up for about six, seven hundred pound. There's not a lot that you need to do to them, but there's, there is always more you can do to yeah, them. Yeah, of course. Uh, so we've had this product out for a while, and it's our carbon fiber shroud reduces a lot of weight from the front. So it's got a, a standard a, a, car, a, a steel sleeve with a great big steel nut on it. And it really makes the gun nose heavy. Uh, putting the, the carbon fiber shroud on it, I'm probably gonna drop the gun so I won't do it too much, <laughs> but it really brings the, uh, the balance of the gun to where you need to. Yeah. Uh, what Connors is doing now is some more go faster bits. So we've got the uh, the magwell there that's a bolt on no modification needed to it that's this awesome. is a very early prototype that we just wanted to get out there in people's hands get some feedback from the customers whether they they liked it um, um, i absolutely love it. it makes loading it a lot quicker uh, we also have in development talking of the the magazines and the magwell some extension bases and shortened followers Okay. So um, I believe this brings the total capacity to around 16. Which is very um, good. With the smaller base and with the magwell, just makes it so much easier to load, uh, so much quicker. And we've also got, for the open shooters out there, uh, an even bigger capacity. Uh, I can't remember on the top of my head what it is, but 20, I'm being told 20, 24. So it is the max capacity for open division? Yes, that, that was, I, I believe, the intention. They're not final, so things might, might change, but those yeah. are the rough forms for them. We're hoping that they're going to be out reasonably, reasonably soon. We do need to get uh, the final. These are all FDM'd at the moment. We need to get them SLS, uh, test them, prove yeah. them. Uh, having somebody like Paul as part of the team, you know, he knows his way around a handgun. So we, um, really helps. we're going to get him out there, testing them, feedback, and, um, and develop to the, to the best possible quality. Um, awesome. So that's that's all new and exciting, and again, as a PPQ fan, I uh, really want to see that out there um, and elevate the PPQ. We've also got the new KMR, so this is from Shield. This is an absolutely bog standard gun. So there's no sort of previews. But you guys are planning to do some stuff though. Th this is def definitely a, a statement uh, of intent. Uh, so Shield are here, it's the first time that customers have been able to get hands on and, and pick up and walk away with one, yeah. after paying of course. <laughs> uh, so it's, we think it's going to be the next big thing. Whilst they're still very fond of the PPQ, uh, they are at two different price points, you're looking 
double, if not three times the price for one of these. But of course, it's, it's modeled after the CZ Shadow. Uh, very popular, practical gun. And the initial reports so far are very, very good. It certainly fills the business. So hard um, question. Right now, you have that in your hands. Yep. You have the PPQ. Which one would you choose if you were to compete with LVPs? If I was to compete with LVPs, I'd really have to get down the range and, and test them side by okay, side. So performance is really a factor as well here, obviously. So the thing is about the LVPs is, is whilst you can look at it as an individual discipline and obviously want to do well in the UK, yeah. ultimately it's about familiarization and training for abroad, for full bore pistol. Yeah. And again, whilst shooting the CZ is not a bad thing, and I think this is why it's going to become very, very popular for people that have CZs out there um, for the European matches, for the American matches, international matches. It's, in my experience, it's a lot harder to get hold of a CZ shadow. Whereas you can always get hold of a Glock and even a PPQ. PPQ seems to be, 9mm PPQ seems to be very, very popular, yeah. very abundant in, in Europe and also in America. So I, even though this might be a better platform, I don't know yet, but it might be better performing, better platform, I would still be tempted to lean towards the PPQ so that when you go out to the States, when you go out to, I know both in NHTSA they have a PPQ and a, a Shadow, so that example isn't particularly good, but uh, even going and being out to Prague, they have PPQs uh, and, and not CZs to borrow. Uh, but, but yeah, that doesn't stop you from maybe getting a CZ out in Europe or, or out in the States and then converting to this. So it's accessibility as well, so you can cross train? I, I think so, yeah. For yeah. familiarization and, and training with the LBP flat, uh, flat, flat platform. Platform, <laughs> there we go. It's been a long couple of days. Uh, yeah, getting yourself training on that, I think is potentially going to see greater dividends yeah. um, if you're using that platform in its full bore form. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, again, nothing, it's a bit, it is a bit more of a tease rather than a, than a preview. Um, but I can give you a, a preview of some stuff that is going to be coming. So we've, we've really sunk our teeth into the 1522 platform. I personally still highly recommend the gun for competition, yeah. certainly for new shooters. The price, for, for the price point, it cannot be beaten in my mind. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to take price out of it, <laughs> um, then the, the battle arms. Uh, a lot of people are switching to these. And yes, a lot of top shooters, um, you know, people that regularly top three, top five in the UK, they're they are moving, or they, they have them on order. I'm not going to name names because they probably don't want it out there at the moment, but I know that they've got them on order. Uh, it's built by Cotswold Classic Arms, built by Otto. Yeah. Somebody I, I cannot recommend or rave about enough. He really knows his stuff, and he has spent a number of years perfecting the CMMG conversion kits. Yeah. Whilst AR-15s are like Lego, they're not uh, as plug and play as people may think. Well, the interesting thing is, because the Battle Arms in the US is a very premium rifle already as it is, getting it in the 224 in the UK is, it's just cream, well, it, it's, I can't even name what it is. <laughs> that is how bad, <laughs> it's just, it's our, awesome. Our selection of guns out there is, is very, very poor. It is. Um, Otto seems to be the one really elevating it. I mean, we've, we've had the likes of you can get Anderson kits. Um, you have been able to get that for a while. Um, Spikes Tactical from North, Northwest Custom Parts. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people rave about those. But also he's been bringing in the Aero Precisions and, and the Battle Arms. And it, it is just, for me, the, the ultimate 2-2 build that you can get currently here in the UK. I, I don't want to necessarily tread on the other builders here, but- But right now, I, in your I, opinion, I haven't handled one that I've liked as much as this. Yeah. Apart from the Ambi that I, I did the review of, I just think they're absolutely awesome. I think they look awesome. Um, they're incredibly lightweight. So I think actually in this configuration, this is lighter than a 1522. So my whole thing about the benefit of shooting a polymer gun is the lightweight and the maneuverability. And well, that's just completely this keeps out the window. all the benefits absolutely. and adds so much more. So built with the CMMG conversion kit, it's been honed in and built by Otto, incredibly reliable already, but the CMMG conversion kits don't like high velocity ammunition. Yeah. They get very, very dirty if you use uh, high velocity uh, and they gunk up and that's when you start to get reliability issues. Okay. So we're working on a few internal components. See some secret stuff. Um, so we've got a 
a bolt weight. Yep. Um, Connors is probably going to cringe as I start taking apart uh, his gun. Um, but we've got the the brass bolt weight okay. on the back. Um, that's to slow down the bolt with high velocity ammunition. Um, and as you can see, like I don't think this gun has been um, cleaned recently, even after the recent level threes. Um, and yeah, you can see it's been shot, but it's still not gunky. It's still reliable. Uh, we're not having uh, the issues with it that you would normally see. We've got firing pin um, as well for it, uh, okay. a CMMG uh, firing pin. So again, that's more reliability. There's, there's things, design tweaks to it to just eke out extra performance. Um, and then compared with the, the bolt weight, you are able to run that high velocity ammunition. I'm a big fan of Minimag. A lot of yeah. people switching for standard. I can see the benefits, but I know Minimag so well. I've been shooting with it for years, so to have the option to still run that um, is great. So that's going to be coming out very, very soon as well on this. Um, off the, the back, this is actually the original prototype of the carbon fiber handguard. Uh, the, the new ones are very much different, uh, but we're going to be bringing out a mil spec carbon okay. fiber handguard. Uh, so this will, will go on any AR build. A lot um, of people have been chasing us for a while for these. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Is my brain deceiving me or is that muzzle brake bigger? <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> Uh, so this actually has a bolt ports and match barrel on it. Okay. Uh, and it's much thicker than, say, the uh, the Chris Defiance or the 1522 or, or other ones. So he's purely just increased the diameter for the aesthetic for it to match and not have that step. So the barrel doesn't look like it's shrunk all of a sudden from the muzzle brake. Ex exactly. So we've um, it's the same geometry, it's the same function, it performs exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a slightly different diameter so that it uh, it matches that barrel. Um, so yes, this is very well tested. We've uh, we run that at the both the level threes in Basildon um, and also at well, Slam Braddock, yeah. um, the the pro shoot uh, and and all of the modifications as well. Uh, so you know, running the the bolt weight, the firing pin. Uh, we've even experimented with uh, with buffers as yeah. well. So they rubber buffers. They may be uh, coming out at some point. Uh, we've also got the grips. So we are going to be bringing out our own AR grips. Okay. Various different sizes. Um, it's just because you're not constrained uh, with 3D printing, you've got the like sort of perfect texture and grip on it. Um, and you can also really hone in the size. So we can do many different shapes, even custom shapes if you want. If, you have, if you've got particularly odd shaped hands <laughs> and you wanted something um, to fit them, uh, we can do that. Uh, we've, we've also got the specific battle arms magwell, which looks, doesn't look like any of our maglo, uh, magwells previously because of the distinctive uh, sort of curve in the magwell from the battle arms. But that is already available. Uh, obviously, on here we've got our rail mount, rail mount 2-2 breach yeah. flag, uh, ambi mil spec and your safety. Degree safety uh, yeah, yeah this, the, this 30 degree and the ambi mag release. You guys have been busy. Yeah, it's been, been, been a busy old um, <laughs> two years. Uh, so. I I think we ended up buying, we had three racks of um, product shelving last last show. Uh, we have seven and it's still not enough. So <laughs> yeah, we, we've, we've been busy with the new stuff. Uh, we've even got uh, the rail covers as well. They will be coming out at some point. There's literally not enough hours in the day to design them, um, take photos, get them out on the website and get selling them. So we're, we're trying hard. We're trying to get all this new stuff out as, uh, as quickly as possible. So that people can uh, can buy it and enjoy it and, and hopefully see the performance benefits. Uh, another new recent product, Chiapa Grips. Yeah. Um, that was quite a, a funny how it came about. Um, it was one of our dealers, Firing Solutions, uh, Tim Gardner at Firing Solutions, a uh, very well-known revolver shooter. Yeah. Uh, he came over to pick up some um, some stock and Connors just sort of threw out there, has anybody tried putting a 1911 style grip on a revolver? No, I don't think anyone's had that idea, Connors, um, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, and now we have. Uh, so it's a lot, a lot so, of people- So you say 1911, that is more double stack or 2011 style, isn't it? 2011, I'd say, I'd, I'd say 1911. It's the same in, in certain it's, aspects. It's a straighter yeah. Yeah. angle. Um, the, the grips that come standard on the Chiapa um, are actually quite small. It's difficult to get a good grip on that gun. Yeah. Um, I mean, form rifle stocks were the first ones that I'm aware of that brought out the upgrade kits or upgrade grips in the UK, but they're not 
for practical competition. Uh, whereas ours are, you know, most practical shooters are used to that 2011 or 1911 grip angle. Yeah. That's something that's going to be very familiar. And the initial feedback has been brilliant. A lot of people seem to. So it feels more natural, it. especially if you're from that age of. Th that's it. If shooting you, the more modern right. If you are more business. of a pistol shooter, it's yeah. going to feel a lot more uh, familiar. That's awesome. It looks really nice, to be honest. It, Thank you. It looks. Yeah. It looks the part, which is amazing, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't look out of place. I mean, some people may have comments about the yellow, but we do it in our full range of uh, colors, 10 colors now. Um, black, yellow, red, orange, green, pink, dark blue, light blue, white, pink, and purple. Wow. So you have all of that. Um, so you're going to be RGB very, very <laughs> much. <laughs> We just start putting lights into your models. <laughs> we've also got um, we've got a new color coming out. Oh, um, okay. Still in the trial phase of it. It's a color that we have been trying to nail down for a very, very long time. Um, it's more shooting um, related, uh, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, oh, but no, keep an eye, keep really an eye out now. on the Facebook uh, Facebook I'll, page yeah, and the website we um, as soon as that's available. It's. It, this has given us nightmares. It's, it's a color that we know every shooter will want um, and is used to. Uh, you should probably do a competition and say, us, uh, find out, what, you know, guess the color. Guess it is and yeah, win it. Um, but it's, it's been a very tricky, we do all the coloring in house now. Um, and actually a lot of these colors, uh, the, the, let's say the professionals that usually color these, um, half the colors they can't do, uh, oh, okay. but we can. Uh, we just can't nail this this particular one, but once Same we have, once right. we're happy with it, once it's ready, it will be out there, um, and and people will be able to see it. But thank yeah, you. I'll give that as a, a massive tease for you. It's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. No problem. We've at held all. up quite a bit of the people behind us. It's getting quite busy, so I'm going to leave you that. Have a great show. Thank What's you very left much. of it, and. Well, I was going to say, I hope to see you soon. That's your yeah. tagline. No, no, I'll, I'll send you an invoice if you use it. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, thanks for stopping by. It's been great, great to chat as, uh, as always. And uh, yeah, look, look forward to seeing the video online. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. Cheers.